This side quest is kind of a side quest off of a side quest. Uh, I've been looking into technology of 1989, 1990, and I came across this Scion MC400 laptop. I've never seen it before, and I just got fascinated by it. I know Scion stuff pretty well. I owned a Scion 3A, and but I'd never seen this before, never seen anything quite like it before. I mean, the industrial design for the era was so forward thinking, and I think that's sort of typical of Scion. Their industrial design was way ahead, um, often ahead of what was uh, practical, as we'll see, because um, they're not always the most robust pieces of equipment. But um, I got a little bit obsessed by this MC400, and I'm going to try and pick one up. But in the meantime, I also started to get fond memories of uh, the Scion 3A, so I decided to go on eBay, pick up some, and uh, take a look and see if we can uh, combine the three I bought, each with uh, issues, and combine them and to, uh, to get kind of a hero Scion 3A. So, wish me luck. I don't normally do this kind of stuff. I'm not great with uh, repairing things, but I'm gonna give it a go. This is the first Scion I bought. Um, it was uh, marked as not working, um, but had worked in the past. Um, <laughs> it came with a couple of carry cases, um, but it also came with uh, five of these uh, docking stations things, um, which at the time I was like, well, that's really interesting. That's going to be a great way to get the Scion into the PC because it didn't come with a VRS232 link cable. Um, I also, but I also at the same time didn't remember there ever being a port underneath um, the Scion 3A, but you know what, I bought it anyway. It came with five of these and uh, this is for the uh, Scion Revo, which I don't own. Um, so I'll probably just keep one of these and maybe try and resell the others. Uh, if I get a Revo one day, maybe I can get a, a cheap, maybe even a non-working one and I can you know attach this. and. Uh, maybe get some use out of it. So this was a little bit more money than I should have paid for it. This was £25, but um, the good news is that its hinges are completely intact. Um, it's a 2 meg model, which was the top of a range. Um, and weirdly, it comes with this um, Jaguar branding. Uh, I don't know if it was but I don't know what it was. Maybe it came with a Jaguar car. Um, maybe Jaguar used them. They were like, I have no idea. Um, I can't say I have a, a deep affinity for, for Jaguar, like an E-Type, like, like everybody, right? But this may come off unless uh, I do a bit more research and find out, you know, I've, I've, it's rare or something. Um, so this is the first one I bought and um, Keyboard's in a little bit of a bad state. Uh, this key's really rubbed off. It's actually looks like um, whoever owned it was either a smoker or maybe it was kept open all the time because it's kind of uh, tarnished the keys a little bit. So that's that one. The second one maybe I bought. Um, ah, so this is the one with, a, with well, Spoiler alert, the two remaining ones have broken hinges, but this is the one with a hinge that broke exactly like my hinge um, on my Scion 3A back in the 90s. Uh, I tried fixing it at the time with uh, just uh, super glue, that did not work. Um, I've read online that there's a, a different type of glue that you can use to repair these because of the plastic that these are manufactured from. We're going to try that, um, but this is just a 512K model. Uh, but Good keyboard, tested, screen works. Uh, and the third one that we've got also suffers from the broken hinge problem, uh, but is a one meg model. Uh, and 
um, also works. The screen's okay on this one. Keyboard's okay on this one. So, what's the plan? The plan is that this is going to be the sacrificial scion. The aim is to get this one fully up and running. So to do that, hopefully the main board's fine. Um, there is some grime or something under this screen, which looks unpleasant. So there's a chance that I'll be swapping out the screen from this one into this one, um, changing the key bed um, over. We'll try and repair this one, but maybe swap the one meg model for 512k. I'm sure it probably said that this, this has 512 meg. It's so weird talking K again. Uh, obviously, you know, two meg, one meg, these, these are tiny numbers. I, I've wasted more than two meg in saying the word two meg. But the reason I think this one is not working is because of its battery compartment. So if we take a look for a start, the case is broken here. There's also uh, some corrosion. Uh, let's try and get an angle on that. Some corrosion on the battery. And um, it should have... this bridge in the middle, but it doesn't. So the first thing we're gonna try and do is swap out these battery compartments and see if we can get the Jaguar Scion working. So let's try unscrewing here. Hopefully I've got the right kind of screwdriver. There are four screws. You can see even on the screws a little bit, you probably can't, but there's a little bit of sort of corrosion. It's obviously extended down this section as well. So at some point I think batteries have leaked. And the damage to the bridge in the case makes me suspect it was probably dropped as well. That's the four screws that should release this section. Oh, it's cracked there as well. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a connection to the main board here. So So obviously the whole back of this battery compartment is a little bit trashed. Um, I'll probably give this a little bit of a clean as well. So let's try taking the battery compartment out of this and putting it on this one and see if it works. Interesting that the screws are a different color on this model. I don't know if they're the color they should be. We'll find out, I guess, when we look at the other Scion. So again, that should just release this back compartment, what fell. Okay, something to do with the hinge, which is probably the broken hinge has fallen. So we're getting a nice uh, batch of broken bits over here. Uh, again, let's try fingers on this one to get it out. Right. So let's see if the theory is correct that it's just battery corrosion that has uh, caused this one to fail. I should check I'm putting this in the right way, yeah. Okay, and wrap that under there. it on. For now, let's put some batteries in. That's a good sign. I 
it took a little bit of time to boot up from completely dead. They have a backup battery. As you can see, replace uh, backup battery. Um, so that once that's replaced, they do tend to boot up a little bit quicker than, than this. Uh, so let's just do a little bit of a... Make sure that everything's working. So is this button bar working? Doesn't look like it unless this updating list is... Uh, That looks completely dead. Um, let's find out if the keyboard's even working. Yep, so the keyboard seems to work, but the button bar doesn't. Uh, so even more things to replace. Of course, if the button bar is faulty and we don't like the screen, which I'm looking like it, I don't like the screen. Um, we're effectively going to repair everything on a single Scion that I think you can probably repair. Yep, that's definitely not working. If we boot up... Uh, ooh, I do hate the crunch on that broken hinge. Um, so basically, I massively overpaid for, <laughs> for a broken Scion with a Jaguar branding. Um, oof. I'm pretty sure the button bar worked on this one. Um, I did. I did test it briefly. So worst comes to the worst, we've got this one with a working button bar. So in this part of the series, we've got the Jaguar Scion up and running. It was a really simple fix, a battery tray just needed replacing. In the next part, I'm going to tear down a Scion 3A and see what parts we can uh, salvage from maybe if you've got a broken one or if you've got a, just a donor Scion like I have and see what parts can be easily transplanted between devices. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more side questing.